fight was from men. And so I fought like a man. I was dominating, aggressive. I always knew what I thought about everything. Well, I still have that, have that aspect. But, um, and um, what I realized very soon after being, when I became president of NAC, um, it, was, uh, it was during the struggle of women of color to get a place in the women's movement. It started at the uh, grassroots level in anti-violence groups, but it soon, um, it soon started to be felt in NAC. And so I felt I had been, I'd worked and done anti-racist work. In fact, I was probably more active in anti-racist work before I was a feminist. So, so uh, and what we decided to do was put aside positions for women of color and Aboriginal women and women with disabilities. And as, and as soon as we did that, then women of color, more women of color started to become active, and they were already active in fighting, um, and, and fighting to be more represented. And I realized very quickly, mostly from the Aboriginal women who were already on the executive, there was three of them on the executive, uh, when I became president, was that my, my qualities that had won, that had gotten me so much success in the world, and when I mean success in the world, even though I was, you know, I, like I said, I was a radical, probably on the edge of left-wing politics in the country. I was still able to have a voice, and so that was success. So I was able to do that by, as um, Audrey Lord would, as Audrey Lord, Lord said, using the master's tools. And what I realized was all of those qualities that made me so successful in the world made me oppressive to other women, and that was a really hard lesson for me, and it was very hard to change, very, very hard to change. But it was a constant struggle because I, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't willing to have tokenism in the organization, so if I didn't agree, I argued, you know, that's how I am. And, uh, and it was a real learning experience, a real, a real profound learning experience. And so I'd say that for me, because um, I can say, what, what is the hardest challenge about being an activist? And what I feel proudest of, if you want, of, of, of myself, is the ability to constantly change. Like if you want to be an activist, you want to change the world, you have to constantly be willing to change. Because the way, what works to change the world in the 1970s is very different than what works to change the world in 1990 or in two, now or in 2000, whatever, 11. Um, and I, that experience, I think up until that time I was pretty rigid. And because I was so fiercely determined for an act to change, um, I changed myself. And I have been doing that ever since. Uh, and, and it turns out that I got much happier. I become more and more like a man. I covered up who I was more and more over this time. And so by challenging that persona that I had, um, I actually found out more about who I was. So yeah, so I wound up being a much happier person too as a result of this struggle. So I learned a lot through that and uh, that was probably in my political life my biggest challenge.